right, hello everybody. Welcome to the channel. Um, this is the re, uh, prosecution's rebuttal to the defense's closing arguments. And I know this is day six, and everybody knows that uh, he was found guilty on all three counts. But I, d I, w I did want, I haven't even seen this yet. So it's not that long, but I thought it was important in the, the cataloging of the trial um, that I have been doing, I just thought it was fitting to to add this to the collection. I mean, there might be some people out there who needed to get caught up and maybe they stumble across this and they can catch a, a glimpse of this at a short video because sometimes it's nice to catch videos that are condensed and where you can get some decent information out of uh, shorter clips. So we're going to see what she has to say because I'm kind of curious of what she's going to talk about. And again, this is the prosecution's rebuttal to the defense's closing arguments. Now they have the they get to do that, and the defense doesn't. They they don't get to get up and rebuttal the rebuttal <laughs> on this one apparently. But uh, here we go. Let's let's get into this. Tim, Miss Black, the um, microphone. Thank you. <laughs> you may begin, Miss Black. Are you going to be using the screen? I'm not. All right, you can go ahead and cut it off then. All right, thank you. Defense just got up here and told you that the horrible act of parenting is not a crime. But in this case, it is a crime. Because it's about what a reasonable parent would or would not do. Because what Tim Farrader did was not reasonable. Now, defense got up here and talked about the horrible things that are did, the dangerous things that he did, the reasons why he had to be locked up. But you have to remind yourself, these are things that he did when he was 11 years old. He is a child. He is in elementary school. Kids in elementary school will get in fights. Sometimes they'll go ahead, make jokes. He decided to go into his sister's classroom and tell the class that she was lying, made her cry. He decided to get into a fight with another child. But none of these actions amount to the treatment that he got from the defendant because you have to put it into perspective. These things happened when he was 11, 10. Yet when he's 14 in Jupiter, Florida, in that box, that's why. Damn. Because of the things that he did when he was 11. They talk about how the behavior was escalating. Okay, her mic is really loud. That wasn't a spike on my end, just a little heads up. But what behavior? The lying about stealing chocolate. The bad attitude that he had when his father put his hands on him, threw him on the bed. The bad attitude that he had when he was throwing his Legos around, taking off his posters because he didn't know how to handle the trauma that the defendant caused him. Now, we know he was found guilty, but if if you go and watch my video of the prosecution's closing argument, it was brutal. And this follow-up to the defense's closing, it's just as damning. And now we, we know why. It was so good and compelling. This is why he was found guilty. I mean, because this, they just bam, bam, bam. They're just nailing it, man. That was the bad attitude that he had. Now, defense also spoke about how Dr. Rappa had records of after the fact, how in 2022 there was a neuropsychological done. But you also have to remember that this evaluation was done after the defendant had been arrested for these charges. You also get to take into consideration the fact that it is a self-reporting evaluation 
that the things that Miss Farrader told the doctor, those are the things that she wanted to tell the doctor. Overruled. Mm. Overruled. Dr. Rappa also talked about that in this evaluation that there were um, changes, there were certain levels in his inhibition, his emotions. But she also testified that this is because of the way that the defendant treated him. She got up there on the stand and said that this is not malicious. This is just how they had to deal with it. This was the end result for them. Not malicious. Yet, she never spoke to the defendant. She never interviewed him. She never got. I'm sorry? Um, overruled. She never got the chance to find out why. And for her, it was pure speculation as to why. The biggest thing here is the criminal intent. Now, we already talked about this in jury selection. What does intent mean? A lot of the jurors would say words, actions, past behavior. And that's what the state has presented you with. We have presented you with the defendant's actions, his words, his behavior towards Rome. Because it's the intent to do these things. Now, the little bleeps are them uh, editing the, the children's names. Okay. Under the aggravated child abuse statute, under the instruction, there's three different ways. It doesn't have to be each one. It's not an and. It's an or. That he was unlawfully caged. Or that he was maliciously punished. Caged. Or that he... Um, was unlawfully and willfully tortured. And we have presented evidence of all three. You might go back up there and say, you know what, I don't think that they proved that he maliciously punished him. But he did unlawfully cage him. Oh. And that's still guilty of aggravated child abuse. Wow. There is also, the defense also brought up the fact that he was explosive, that he was violent. But there was no evidence of that during that six-week period in Jupiter, Florida. If you see the videos in both the state's videos and the defense videos, he was docile. He seemed nervous around his parents. At one point in the defense videos, He's standing next to the couch while his father's watching TV. He doesn't know whether he should sit down or not. He doesn't know how Ooh. the defendant's going to react. Sustain. But eventually, you will see that he sits there. And he'll look at the father. Look at the father's reaction. Sustain. I mean, excuse me, overruled on that. You will also see in some of the videos how he acts in the room. That he's withdrawn. He doesn't have that stimulation. I know defense got up here and showed you January 5th. That was the big picture. He had his Ooh. Legos. He had his desk. Oh he God. had his bed. He had everything. But throughout each day. Now, that, that's her mic. She, she's eating it. So <laughs> it's killing my ears too. So I apologize. I don't know what to do about it. There's less and less and less. They try to say that this was the result of a timeout. But we all know that from Dr. Myers, a timeout is not a long duration of time. If they wanted to call a timeout, it's a timeout from January 5th, 2022 to January 28th, 2022. Again, not reasonable. That's a long timeout. This is brutal. You know, he's going to get sentenced on, oh, uh, well, I have it wrote down. Uh, I guess sentencing is November 16th, and I definitely want to be there for that. <clears throat> I mean, y'all know, if you don't know, the defense, uh, after he was found guilty by the jury, 
the defense asked if he could basically go home until sentencing, and the judge denied it. I was like, damn. And he doesn't have custody of his kids. They're making this case. He's not a flight risk, whatever. But he said no. They're, they're going to arrest him right then and there, which was, uh, I believe, yesterday. Um, but... What? What? Why didn't he take the deal? Why didn't? Why didn't he take this guy? I don't know, man. He. I bet he's kicking himself all over the place. That he's just. Uh, he's just. Is he that arrogant and narcissistic? Defense also brought up that this was a. Nor natural response to control the child. That if a child stole a car, what do you do? You take the keys away, you take the car away, and that it's not taken to the extreme. But yeah, it was taken to the extreme, all right. Making a child go to the bathroom in a bucket, that is taking it to the extreme. They said that they wanted to lock the door at, at night because they were scared of him running away, scared of him causing harm to himself, scared of all these things would, hap would happen to him. But there, there was no evidence of that. He couldn't even leave in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. He had to be degraded and dehumanized and use that bucket. Not only that, but you saw in multiple videos that the animals had the freedom to go around the house. Oh, shit. Yet he was the one that was locked in that box. Yeah. Overall, jury can rely on their own um, understanding of the evidence that was presented and published to you. Pretty much, yeah. In reference to the violence that the defense was talking about, there was only two times that was brought up. And that was in Arizona, in which the defendant's not being charged with. We're specifically talking about the time frame in December of 2021 to January of 2022. They also brought up that they had to keep in this box because it was this way. That's what they had to do. They had no other option. They had no other choice. This is what had to be done in order to protect them. But you know what else could have been done? The medicine, the therapy, that could have been done. Both experts testified that there were only a handful of times that had gone to a mental health professional. One of the experts testified that there were about two or three 30 minute sessions. Is it reasonable to think that in two 30 minute sessions, the problem is going to be solved? No. But the defendant, the solution to that is putting that kid in that box. Not trying to find other providers. Not trying to find Overall. different medications that may have worked for him. But no, that was their solution. Both experts also testified that this was not the proper solution. This is not what you do when you have a child with these issues. This is not what you do when you have a child that just wants to be loved, that wants to be part of that family. Sustain, move on. Jury is instructed to disregard the last comment of counsel. You may continue. There was also a comment about Dr. Myers not watching all 21,000 videos. Oh my God. Yet Dr. Rappa did not watch all 21,000 videos either. Burn. And again, they went to some doctors and then it stopped. They didn't follow the advice and again, no doctor told them. Overruled as to that. Again, the jury is instructed to rely on your own recollection of the evidence and any determination you make. 
the biggest thing here is that the crime occurred in the only space that had known for long periods of time. She said the crime occurred. The state never made any allegations that he was in there 24-7. The state never said that he had never left his room. He did. But you have to also look at the fact that the only time he left his room was when there was a parent around. When they told him, you're allowed to come out. When they told him and they would stand there and follow him out. Those were the only times he was allowed from the room. There was also times that he did not control the light. It was the defendant who would control the light, whether it was on during the day, whether it was off during the day, whether it was on at night. He also controlled the air conditioner. You heard testimony in, in the videos that the defendant did not want him touching that air conditioner. Even at points where he says it's too hot, still told him, do not touch it. I know he, he said, don't touch it. You're a tough guy. Do you think their home was nice and comfortable and cool? Why that boy was stuck in the garage in that box with the light out, roasting, and it probably smelled awful. Uh, you you people out there got teenagers, teenage boys? Their room smells like a gym locker. I got to get in there with Lysol, spray stuff, keep the shoes outside. Could you imagine that room? That boy's that poor boy's room. For Pete's sake, it's probably, it was probably horrendous. So defense got up here and they started talking about the affirmative defense um, to the aggravated child abuse and to the lesser of the child abuse. There is no affirmative defense here because what the defendant did was not reasonable. It was not reasonable to lock him in a box. It was not reasonable to leave him in the dark. It was not reasonable to take the light away from him. It was not reasonable to leave him in the room with no air conditioning. It was not reasonable to make him pee in a bucket. There was no legal justification for any of this. And because of that, you should find the defendant guilty of all three counts. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Black. Let me have counsel approach, please. Wow. Wow. I think I'm wrong. This wasn't yesterday. This was the day before. My days are running into each other, and I, I apologize. There was just so much to cover. Uh, yesterday was the verdict. Uh, this was the day before day six. Um, I just thought, uh, to get this in there, <laughs> the rebuttal. She did good. She did all right. I think the other attorney was just on fire for the prosecution's uh, closing arguments. And if you haven't seen her closing arguments, it's a good watch. It really, it really is. And it's, it's not all the time you get a lawyer that's on all cylinders firing. Um. I mean, I started taking a look at uh, the Maya case, and I did watch the um, opening statements of both the plaintiff and the defendant, which is uh, John Hopkins. The plaintiff is uh, Maya. It was so bad. They were so, both, both attorneys on each side were so monotone, and then as I got into some of the trial testimony, I started seeing, okay, some of the stuff that they, they obviously they were saying in the opening statements are, are coming out. And they, they were methodical in the opening statements, but it was boring. There was no passion, you know, getting, you know, getting the juices flowing. It, it was, it was awful. <laughs> it wasn't riveting at all. So it's, 
it's nice seeing a, an attorney be riveting in opening and closing um, arguments. But anyway, there you have it. Thought we'd add that in there. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, let me know what y'all think about the trial. And have a great day and peace out. <laughs>